Hello, kiddos. I'm going to read you a book today called Coffee Bean for Kids, written by John Gordon. Are you a carrot? Are you an egg? Or are you a coffee bean? Gavin used to love going to school, but not this year. He and his family moved to a new city and he was having trouble making friends at his new school. Some of the kids also made fun of him because they said he talked funny. As Gavin walked into his classroom, he saw his teacher, Mrs. Spring, and her smile always made him smile. He liked Mrs. Spring. He liked her class, and he wished that everyone at school was as nice to him as she was. When the school day was over, Mrs. Spring asked Gavin to stay after class. She thought He thought he was in trouble at first. His palms got cold and sweaty, and he could hear his own heart pounding. Mrs. Spring said, Gavin, I can see that you are not happy. In fact, you look kind of sad. You hardly ever smile. And when you do, it's usually only when you say hello to me before class starts. What's wrong, Gavin? A few tears came trickling down his face as he told Mrs. Spring about how hard it is to adjust to his new school and how hard it is to make friends. To make matters worse, his parents were fighting a lot. Mrs. Spring gave him a big smile and said, I'm going to share with you one of the best lessons that you will ever learn. It's also going to help you make new friends and become a leader for the rest of your life. Mrs. Spring went to the whiteboard and drew a picture of a pot of boiling water. Then she drew a carrot inside of the pot. She asked, what happens if you put a carrot into a pot of boiling water? You get carrot soup, Gavin asked. Mrs. Spring smiled. You're on the right track, Gav Gavin, she said. Mrs. Spring smiled. Gavin, you know what happens? A carrot turns soft and mushy in a pot of boiling water after just a few minutes. Mrs. Spring then drew another pot of boiling water on the whiteboard. This time she drew a picture of an egg inside of a pot and she asked, what happens if you put an egg into a pot of boiling water? That's easy, Gavin said. My mom did this at Easter. If you put eggs in the pot of boiling water to make the eggs, to get them hard, they get uh, turn into a hard boiled egg. That is absolutely correct, said Mrs. Spring. The soft inside of the egg turns hard after a few minutes in a pot of boiling water. Gavin looked confused. He asked Mrs. Spring how a picture of boiling carrots and eggs could be one of the best lessons that he's ever going to learn. You'll see, Gavin. I have one more example for you. Next to the pots of the carrot and the egg, she drew a third pot of boiling water. This time, she drew a coffee bean inside the pot and asked Gavin if he knew what would happen when you put a coffee bean in boiling water. I have no idea, Gavin said. Mrs. Spring explained, the coffee bean, the smallest of these three things, changes the water into coffee. You see, the power to change is inside the coffee bean. Gavin looked confused. I don't understand what carrots, eggs, and coffee beans have to do with me fitting in or finding friends, he said. Life is often like a pot of very hot water, said Mrs. Spring. It can be harsh, it can be stressful, and a difficult place. 
you will find yourself in places and situations that test who you truly are. And you can change, weaken, or harden if you let them. Like all the stuff I'm going through right now, Gavin asks. Exactly that, Gavin. You are feeling the pressures of fitting into a new school, the difficulties of finding new friends, and your parents are fighting. You are experiencing fears over things that you cannot control, and it feels like you are in one big pot of boiling water, but you do have a choice. You can be the carrot that is weakened and softened by its surroundings, or you can be like you can be the egg that is hardened by the mean people in the world, or you can be like the coffee bean that transforms and changes its environment around it. When I look at you, I don't see a carrot and I don't see an egg. I see a coffee bean who will overcome and his challenges and change the world someday. That made Gavin smile. Do you really think I can be a coffee bean? Mrs. Spring smiled. I know you can be a coffee bean. Gavin, in fact, I want you to remember this lesson for the rest of your life. Wherever you go and whatever you do, remember you are a coffee bean and you have the power to transform any environment that you are in. No matter how hard things get or how hopeless things may appear, do not ever give up. Realize that we don't create our world from the outside in. We create and transform it from the inside out. If you think you're a carrot, you will believe the forces outside of you are stronger than you are inside and you're going to become weaker. If you think you are an egg, you will believe that mean people in this world have the power to harden your heart and cause, cause you to become negative and angry, just like they are. If you know you're a coffee bean, you will not allow the outside world to affect you. You will know that the power inside you is greater than the forces outside of you. And with this insight, you will positively transform your world from the inside out. The power is on the inside. Be a coffee bean, Gavin. Mrs. Spring then opened a jar on her desk and pulled out a coffee bean. Keep this in your pocket, she said. And as a reminder of who you are and the power you have, the best is yet to come for you, Gavin. Gavin took the coffee bean and told her thank you and ran away excitedly towards the door. Wait, Gavin, Mrs. Spring stopped him. There's one more thing you need to know. Coffee beans are always smiling, even on the days when they do not feel like it. Do you know why? So they can be happy? Gavin said. That's right, she said. It's also for other people to be happy. And when people see you smiling, they will smile back. Then other people will see the smiles and they'll start smiling. Positive energy and smiling is contagious. Just like when I greet all of you kids when you're coming in my room every morning. I'm being a coffee bean, so you will all be positive little coffee beans. Coffee beans attract other coffee beans. So go now, Gavin. Go be a coffee bean. When Gavin's mother picked him up from school, she noticed how happy and excited he was. She asked him what was different, so he told her all about the coffee bean. From now on, Mom, I am going to be a coffee bean. The next day at school, Gavin was all smiles. He noticed that it was working. Other kids were smiling back at him. When he got to Mrs. Spring's class, he high-fived her with a huge grin on his face. Mrs. Spring knew he would 
he was feeling the awesome power of being a coffee bean. At the end of the week, the snow cone truck came to school. Many of the kids rushed out to buy one. Gavin was standing in line for his snow cone and noticed a kid with special needs standing all alone. He had an idea. He went over to Mrs. Spring and asked if he could use his snow cone money to buy the other kid a snow cone. Mrs. Spring smiled and told him that it would be absolutely okay. That is definitely a coffee bean thing to do, she told him. Gavin was a little nervous about meeting a new kid, and he went over to the boy to introduce himself, but before he could even say a word, the boy smiled back and put his hand out. Hi, my name is Michael, he said. What is your name? That was easier than Gavin thought. Michael was really friendly. Gavin shook Michael's hand. I'm Gavin, he replied. Do you want a snow cone? Michael kept smiling and nodded his head up and gay, up and down. I love snow cones, he said. Gavin and Michael walked over to the snow cone truck to buy Michael a snow cone. Gavin didn't get to eat a snow cone because he only had enough money for one. But the best treat of all was watching how happy Michael was eating his snow cone. Wow, Gavin thought to himself, being a coffee bean feels good. A few days later, Gavin was at lunch, sitting quietly by himself, like he always did. But even though no one else sat with him, he was not sad. In fact, he was smiling just like Mrs. Spring told him to do. As he was opening his lunchbox, he noticed a girl standing next to him. Hi, I'm Clara. Do you want to sit with me and my friends? She asked. Gavin couldn't believe it. Clara was one of the smartest and prettiest girls in fourth grade. They were in Mrs. Spring's class together, but they had never talked to each other before. Now she was asking him to sit with the other friends. Um, sure. Clara walked with Gavin to the table where she ate with her friends. She introduced Gavin to each one of them. Gavin, these are my friends. Peter, Maya, and Priya. Everybody, this is Gavin. Everyone smiled and said hello. As soon as Gavin sat down, all the kids took turns talking to him. He barely had a chance to eat his lunch because there was so much conversation. Gavin could not believe his luck. Until today, he had no friends. Now he had a table full of new friends. When the table got quiet, he asked Clara, why is everybody being so nice to me? All the kids at the table looked at Clara. She smiled and said, we noticed that you've been smiling a lot and looking for ways to help others. Like the other day when you bought Michael a snow cone, that was very kind. My mother tells me all the time that being kind is the best thing you can be and that it's a choice. We are always looking for the other kind kids to be our friends. Gavin knew he had made his new friends because of his choice to be a coffee bean. I'm a coffee bean, he said. It sounds like you're all coffee beans too. The kids looked confused. So Clara asked Gavin what it meant to be a coffee bean. Gavin told everyone at the table about the lesson Mrs. Spring taught him and about the carrot and the egg and the coffee bean and about how being a coffee bean would attract other coffee beans and create positivity. That gave Clara an idea. Gavin, this is something we should share with all the kids in school. In fact, we should start a coffee bean club and go find other coffee beans who could turn this world around into one big pot of coffee. After school, Clara and Gavin talked to Miss Spring about the coffee bean club. Miss Spring thought it was a great idea and they agreed the club would meet before school every day. Clara, Gavin, and their friends began telling everyone about the first coffee bean meeting. They made flyers and went around telling kids in every grade about the carrot, the egg, and the coffee bean. At lunch the day before the first meeting, they even made a coffee bean song. When the morning for their first meeting finally arrived, Clara and her mom, Mrs. Kendall, arrived at Mrs. Spring's classroom early with some healthy snacks that they had made the night before. 
When the kids started arriving, Mrs. Spring was all smiles as usual. Gavin, hey Gavin, my mom said I would, would could be a coffee bean too, Michael said proudly. Miss Spring started the meeting by telling everyone the main goals of our club are to be kind and everyone always being positive. Next, Miss Spring told the students they needed to come up with rules for the coffee bean club. Claire insisted and raised her hand. I think the first rule should be to help others. She said, this means that you look for carrots and eggs and try to help them become coffee beans. The kids clapped in approval. So Miss Spring wrote on the whiteboard, rule number one, help others. Gavin raised his hand next. Include everyone. He said, this means that everyone who wants to be in the club can join. It also means that when someone wants to join in and play a game or sit at your lunch table, then they can too. More coffee beans make our coffee pot stronger. Again, the kids clapped in approval and they added a second rule to the whiteboard. Rule number two, include everyone. Maya was called on next. The third rule should be to smile because smiles are like boomerangs. When you smile, it comes back to you. You smile at someone and they smile back. Smiles make me happy, said Michael, as Mrs. Spring wrote on the board. Rule number three, smile. After the three rules of the Coffee Bean Club were on the board, Clara raised her hand. Miss Spring, we made a song for the club. Can we sing it, she asked. Of course you can, said Miss Spring. How exciting. Clara, Gavin, Peter, and Maya, and Priya, and Michael all went to the front of the room and began to sing. I'm a coffee bean, you'll see what I mean. Carrots are good for your sight. But get soft when things don't go right. Eggs are a great source of protein. Boiled and boiled in water, they get hardened and mean. I won't be a carrot or an egg. I'll just be a coffee bean instead. I may be the smallest of all the three. Put me in water and you will see that I'm a coffee bean. The room erupted with cheers and clapping and the kids started chanting, coffee beans, coffee beans, coffee beans. The Coffee Bean Club made it their mission to find coffee beans all over their school. They wrote positive notes to the students who seemed to be having a tough time, and they engaged in random acts of kindness. Over the course of the rest of the year, it was clear to all that the Coffee Bean Club positively changed their entire school. In fact, the club became came so big that they had to hold their meetings in the gymnasium just to fit everyone. Everyone wanted to be a coffee bean. Everyone in the whole school. It was no longer cool to be negative or mean. Instead, it became cool to be a coffee bean and help others. So remember, you can do the same thing to change, make positive changes at your school. Number one, help others. Number two, include everyone. And number three, the biggest and probably the easiest, smile. It'll come back to you. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.